Hello, my name is Richard Northover and I'm the Managing Director of Navtor UK. The aim of this tutorial is to demonstrate passage planning module in NavStation. To begin, select the route and passage planning icon, which will display your existing NavStation route. For this example, I will continue on from the route planning tutorial, taking the route we've already created, Grangemouth to Immingham, and develop a passage plan for that route. Select the right hand arrow next to the route name to bring up the action icons. Click Create Open Passage Plan and then select OK to create a passage plan for that route. You'll be asked to verify the vessel configuration. Either select OK to confirm that it is correct or Open Config to amend the vessel particulars. Check that the default values and data collection under the Passage Planning tab are applicable for the route. I have set my default passage type as coastal. In the current version of NavStation, there are three passage types, ocean, coastal and pilotage. The default security level is set here for the passage plan. The under keel clearance percentage base can be either static or dynamic draft, and I have set it as dynamic. Under the UKC formula to be used, the options are the Barras formula, the Barras equation, or a combination of both. I am using the Barras formula. However, it depends on your organization's particular SMS policy. The minimum overhead clearance requirement for your vessel is set here. The waypoint numbering is set here to configure to the same as your ECTIS. I will highlight the initial underkeel calculation limit, which can either be set as a figure or a percentage of your vessel's draft. I've used the latter, and for pilotage, I have used 20% of the vessel's dynamic draft, but this must reflect your organization's SMS policy. Next, you can check the data collection values, detailing what information is picked into the passage plan and what distance from the route. The port's database can be accessed, which will be updated for each port visited. Once the configuration is set to match both your vessel and your organization's SMS policy, we can move to the actual passage plan. Once the setup is complete, this configuration does not need to be revisited for each new passage plan. Part 1 of the passage plan contains general information. On the left-hand panel, insert the departure and arrival port, which will populate the details from your saved port database. Manual input of new port or berth information can also be completed at this stage. The departure time, vessel's fore and aft draft, and displacement are required at this stage. You will note that the trim and block coefficient are automatically populated based upon these values. The arrival time is automatically calculated by NavStation based upon the speed of each leg of your route. In the top panel, you will note the vessel's name and details have been pre-filled from your vessel configuration. The route name is displayed and you can manually add a voyage number if required. The minimum clearance under keel is brought over from your vessel's configuration and this will conform to your organization's SMS policy. Air draft for departure and arrival is input here and this completes the initial configuration for the passage plan. The commencement of sea passage and end of sea passage specifications are detailed, which are taken from the information set when making the waypoints for the route. The information which is going to be utilized throughout the passage plan is now displayed through the bottom of the page. This also shows which week it is updated to. At this point, you can input emergency anchorages and ports of refuge at the bottom of the page. The prepared by, acknowledged by and approval for the passage plan 
is at the very bottom of the first page. Many organizations require more than one approver, and again, this will be detailed in your SMS policy. Page one is now complete with all the basic information for the intended voyage. Moving on to page two, which details waypoint position and name together with the information about course and distance to the next waypoint. Leg speed is either brought in from the default settings or can be changed manually at this stage. Water depth will be auto-picked from the ENC so long as it is within the parameters detailed in the settings. You'll see in our example there are some red values. The color coding indicates a go or no go based upon the minimum underkeel clearance UKC, which has been detailed in the settings from your SMS policy. The initial UKC is based only upon water depth minus the static draft. If the initial UKC is shown as red, or if no figures are displayed, then a full UKC will be required. To conduct a full UKC calculation with squat influence, we must revert to the relevant waypoint. For waypoint five in our example, we can select the full UKC icon under the waypoint. This now takes us through to show a graphical image of the vessel, together with the calculation methodology. This shows the total water depth at the time of passing. The catsog correction is displayed based upon extrapolated figures from the below catsog table. Other environmental influences are taken into account at this stage. The squat for the vessel will be displayed at this stage, and we can detail if this is to be based upon open, confined, or a mixed formula. You will note in this example that we still do not fulfill the organization's minimum UKC requirements. However, NavStation will, if possible, display a recommended speed order with which to comply, therefore providing a go for this leg of the voyage. Security and nav watch level are automatically pre-filled based upon the type of passage from the settings. These can be altered if required. Page three of the passage plan details waypoint by waypoint, position references and parallel indexing. In this example, there is already a position reference for the turn or wheel over into the main channel. This is a landmark, in this case, a highly visible chimney. To add a new reference, click on the chart to select an object, in this case, a lateral buoy, and that automatically fills in the details. You will note that the passage plan has been updated with the new information. In the same way, parallel indexing and action points for each waypoint can be added at this stage. XTD and position fixing methods are auto-filled based upon the passage type specified in the settings. Page 4 details the passage type, catsog for the hydrographic data, and other information pertaining to that waypoint and leg. Page 5 shows what digital charts and publications are utilized and therefore harvested into the passage plan. Further across, you can see the nav text areas and nav area warnings which are displayed for each leg of the voyage. These are automatically harvested based upon the picking distances we demonstrated earlier. Page 6 notes the overhead obstacles. So in this case, we can see Rosyth bridges. It also allows you to insert free text for environmental information and security related information into the relevant boxes. If we look at waypoint 6 and 7, they both, in this example, have an overhead clearance element. Under waypoint 6, the graphical representation for the UKC is dynamic and shows a visualization of the overhead clearance. The final page of the passage plan gives you a free text area which allows all other relevant information which may be required. We do hope this tutorial has been useful and informative. You can find further videos on NavTor's dedicated YouTube channel 
or on the website.